Hey, welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with. It's the interview series presented by WFPK at WFPK.org. Consequence and the Consequence Podcast Network. Thanks as always for making your way here, for checking out the episode. Hit that subscribe button so you can keep up with all the interviews that I put out every single week. In fact, you get three brand new interviews just like this one sent to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Makes it a great way to keep up with your favorite artists and discover those new ones. You can grab us anywhere you get podcasts from, including Spotify, Apple Podcast, NPR, WFPK.org, Consequence, uh, or of course, right here on YouTube for the video versions. Anywhere you get your podcast from, you can subscribe to Kyle Meredith with. And that's me, Kyle Meredith, today catching back up with Kurtwood Smith, who once again stars as Red in that 90s show, season two of the sequel series to that 70s show. Uh, we're going to be talking about what it means to come back for the second season, settling into the characters a bit more, the writing. Uh, and the jokes really do start to remind me much more of the original 70s series uh, in all the best ways. So we're going to hear about the cast. We're going to hear about the guest stars, uh, such as Kevin Smith and Jason Mewes, Carmen Electra, Lisa Loeb, and of course, working with Tommy Chung, who's been on the series since the uh, the beginning. I want to hear about uh, Kurt Wood's background, too. Um, uh, comedy was not where he got his start, but it definitely uh, wasn't something unfamiliar to him. So we'll hear about that. Uh, and diving into a bit of his past, he's been doing some uh, anniversary screenings, Dead Poets Society. Uh, so we're going to hear about what it's like kind of re-experiencing this one. And uh, and also, you know, with the uh, Taylor Swift hoopla that's uh, that's happened recently with uh, Dead Poets Society as well. We'll talk about that and his friendship with uh, one Mr. Dave Matthews. All that and more as we dig into season two of that 90s show out now on Netflix. It's Kyle Meredith with Kurtwood Smith. Kyle. Hello, hello. How are you? I'm sorry I'm late here. I, uh... I was laughing uh, when you and I did this a year ago, whenever for the first season. Yeah. I don't think I ever said it, but there's no reason for me to say it. But I had a I had a fever that whole interview. I was running a fever like about 102. I was sick as a dog. That day. But because of Zoom, you know, I was like, I can do this. It doesn't matter. I have not been sick since then. And here I am with a dumb summer cold. And I've just got to say, I think it's, I think it's you. <laughs> it is me. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's something I'm practiced at. And, um, uh, I try to keep it on the down low so I can surprise people, but you, you find me out. Yeah. That's, uh, that's my a wife is from have. Louisville. My wife grew up in Louisville. I didn't know that. I don't yeah, think she that. did. Yeah. Um, she went to Atherton high school. Uh -huh. and I can't remember the other one. She yeah. went to two high schools for some reason. Wagner. Wagner. Yeah. Yes. I've got some yeah. family that went to Wagner. I've got my son's got some friends that are in Atherton. He goes to uh, Manual. He's a Y Pass kid uh -huh. uh, in the performing arts school there. So it's. Uh, oh, 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 yeah. That's, that's cool. Yeah, I didn't know that. And my, my assistant uh, um, I grew up in Kentucky, but, 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 but she identifies with Cincinnati. So. Oh, she's Northern Kentucky. Yeah. Yes, Northern Kentucky. Yeah. No, she lives in some little, little lived in some little burg on the right on the border, Fort Fort something. I don't yeah. Know. Yeah. Anybody in Northern Kentucky says they're from Cincinnati, and I don't blame them. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I watched a couple of your uh, shows last night um, for fun. Um, and I watched the one with the Gladiator. The, oh, the, Russell uh, Crowe. Yeah, Russell Crowe. Yeah. Yeah, excellent show, and uh, I I was so jealous of him getting to do that seventeen page scene, you know, uh, with Michael Shannon. Um, I it, it yeah, it sounded like it would be great fun, and and, and make me quite curious about the film. You know? I cannot wait to. I really, as he said, you like you know, it's out of his hands whether they keep that or not. I so I I really. Right. Like I want to, even if it's like, you know, bonus footage somewhere, just knowing that exists like that, sure. like, yeah. and that's, I got a little, you know, because the gladiator thing, it, it did the mileage and everybody picked it up and all that. And uh, it, as soon as he said it, I was like, oh, that's it, you know, but, um, but that's the one I wish somebody would take right there. I wish like screen yeah. rant or one of those sites that do that kind of thing, like pick up on that because that's the fun story. That's, uh, yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's that, you know, it's a challenge and, uh, um, just, just the kind of thing that, um, actors like to get their teeth into, you know? Um, so I'm going to talk to uh, Steve Conrad, who I worked with on a couple of shows, uh, Patriots and, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Perpetual Grace. And, uh, 
tell him to write a nice scene like that for Terry O'Quinn and myself. So we'll see if he if he you takes seventeen the pages straight through. Same way. <laughs> no, we'll go for eighteen. Eighteen. We'll go for one more. You know. <laughs> that's awesome well thank you so much for having me on today um you know we're all very excited about the second season of uh um uh, the 90s show the uh i think it's i think it's better i i i was pleased with the way the 90s show came out the first season but uh but i think that this one at least when we were shooting it certainly felt that way and i got a text last night from our uh, you know, uh, showrunner, head writer, uh, 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 Greg Mettler, and he he said that it's just coming together, fantastic. So yeah, so and, and I've I, like I so I've seen the whole well the part two that that's out there, and oh. um, I I will I will echo you. First off, it feels closer maybe to the original season, and maybe that's yeah. a little bit settling in for you all, you know. Mm -hmm. But like mm -hmm. I don't know. The first season is the reunion, right? And the, and 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 getting your footing with this new crowd. Like, what is the second season? Like, what was it going into this? I think it was just pretty much exactly what you said. You know, we weren't worried about this and that and everything else. We just, you know, we had established who everybody was and how everybody kind of fit together. And it was just uh, kind of, uh, you know, that can take you several episodes to put all those pieces together. And when you've got all that to begin with, you know, you can just roll. And um, I think that's what we were doing. Yeah. And you're also, and maybe you and the kids, the kids, I should just say this, that, that they had that year of experience behind them. I mean, some of the kids had had pretty good experience before, uh, but still not playing these characters and not working with each other. And it's such an ensemble piece, you know, especially for them uh, that, um, you know, I, you know, I think that that, that helped a lot. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was, it, it, you could tell everybody was a bit more comfortable. The stories, they, they, they flowed. And, you know, it's just noticing maybe you were on the first season too, but you're the, one of the executive producers. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know, like how involved do you get with the bigger picture, the story arc, any of that stuff? We don't, we don't really do that, but we have, we could do that. You know, um, Deborah Joe and I wonder every once in a while uh, if we should be doing more. But I think if they wanted more from us in that regard, they would they would come to us and say, uh, what's your opinion about this or that? What this does do for us, though, is it gives us that position. Otherwise, you're just an actor knocking on the, uh, on the door, whereas this way, you know, you are part of what's behind the door. So, um, you know, I... It hasn't. I can't think of any examples right now that that it, uh, you know of anything that they could do for us, but uh, uh, what we could do with it. But if we wanted to, you know, if you start, I think although they're very careful about this, um, but I think that like if you if we started feeling like you know the character is getting lost here you know we've focused so much on we're focusing so much on this or that that you know i'm kind of feeling up in the cold here i i just i wouldn't think twice about doing that. i remember once during the 70s show <clears throat> there was an arc that we were doing uh uh with the red and kitty that uh that was fun it was good but then it after a while it was my feeling that it was starting to weaken the character red's character <clears throat> so I still waited, you know, because I wasn't sure how they were going to take this, but eventually I finally just said, oh, I got to do it. So I went to them and explained to them and they said, you know what, you're right. And so they, they sort of changed. Now, for example, now I wouldn't wait that long. You know, if I, yeah. <laughs> if I felt it was the, the arcs are noticeable too. I mean, if you, I, it, it seems to me, and I'd have to go back to really watch it to make sure I'm right about this, but but because of the way this these seasons are structured now, you know, it's over one summer, like the entire season is a continuous story, which I'm guessing mm -hmm. was not the case back on that 70s show. Like, yeah. does that change? Like, I don't know. First off, do you, do you, do you have a preference? Does that change the way the whole thing feels that you really are kind of telling one long story this time? I think so. Uh, because I, you know, I think you're, 
time wise, you're 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 able to sort of judge what you know. You, you know how many episodes you got left. You know at the end of that episode, it's the end of the summer, and uh, the next time we see these characters, everybody's going to be a year older. Um, whereas on the 70s show, we, we we would get lost in terms of what year it was, you know, supposed to be, you know, because uh, right. it wasn't always clear to us. It didn't really matter, you know. Every once in a while, it would be like, oh, it's graduation. Oh, really? You know, um, um, so how graduation, then how old are they? Oh, we don't know for sure. Let's just, you know, play the graduation. You know, here we go. <clears throat> um, it wasn't graduation, though, because uh, I think that that, I think the show pretty much ended when right. they, when they yeah. graduated. But that's, I mean, that was the old, the old, I mean, the old sitcom style, right. you know, especially when you look all the way back, you know, 60s and 70s, it never mattered the time, you know, it's, uh, no, no. But, and there was that thought, I mean, there was the thought that, God, they probably said the viewer is dumb or something like that, you know, yeah. that changed. And, and it, I don't think the viewer was ever dumb. You know, the viewer has always been smart enough. That's why HBO was able to do what it did, you know, in the late nineties and early two thousands. But that's, I think what I like about a show like this is you're still using the sitcom formula, but the viewer isn't stupid. You know, the viewer is along mm -hmm. for the ride on that. Uh, I appreciate it. What do you think? What do you think changed it? What do I think changed it? Mm. I mean, like, well, again, I think the viewer was always able to keep up. And again, Twin Peaks is a great example of that. But really, mm -hmm. for me, and when I look at it, and I think, you know, I when I say I look at it, I've probably heard it. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, when you had shows like Sopranos, that said, or The Wire, or stuff mm -hmm. like that, when they said every episode doesn't have to be its own new story. You know, Twin mm -hmm. Peaks was the same way. It's like, we can do that. And it mm -hmm. works. And people lasted yeah. there, you know, and people latch yeah. onto that. Um, yeah. I certainly like that. Yeah, I, I, I do as well. Yeah. Episode wise on this show, uh, it's it, it, it there is still some of that when, you know, we're not always continuing tomorrow, you know, or, you know, it's not all it's not all one day, you know, it's not like a Greek tragedy or something, you know, it's not, you know. Every episode lasts one day, and then we definitely we have X number of episodes. Um, but uh, so you know, um, so we still have that flexibility. Uh, that if we wanted an, you know, if we wanted an episode to be one a couple of days, you know, we could do that. But it seems to me, for the most part, because there's always a couple of storylines going on, and usually at least one of the storylines, not always for the kids, uh, but generally speaking for uh, Deborah Joe and I, um, the, usually we finish a storyline in that episode. Mm -hmm. There we are. Yeah, <laughs> but the story, you know, it, it does do that. The thing about, also I like hearing, especially when people talk about the show in reviews, but more so fans, your Instagram when you post something about it. and I mean, everybody, you became one of America's dads a long time mm -hmm. ago. And you can tell that that has still just gotten deeper and deeper. Maybe it's one of uh, an American dad like Archie Bunker sometimes, but uh, yeah. it's an American yeah. dad nonetheless. Did you ever model that after anyone? Uh, would be my stepdad. Um, my stepdad was very much like that, you know, uh, uh, in terms of well, the thing I always say about Red, which I feel is is uh, um, key to his character and key to the show, is that he was preparing Eric um, for to face a world and a life that he knew, he Red knew, uh, and not that Eric, you know, not Eric's world. You know what I mean? And I think that was that was ultimately the clash between the two um, because Eric wasn't seeing the world the same way that Red was seeing the world. And I think there, there was a lot of that that happened, especially, you know, uh, post-World War II, you know. Um, uh, I think that the, 
GIs came home and, you know, they were proud of what they'd done, rightfully so. And then, you know, they, you know, the parents, because all the parents, uh, all my friends' dads seemed to be sort of in that same mode. They all handled it differently, but there was still that same idea was, you know, get you ready for the world. But they're trying to get you ready for, you know, before the war or something. Yeah. yeah. I like hearing um, that because you all make it look very easy. Um, sitcoms can sometimes dramatically look like a bit of an easy lift. I know that's not always the case, right. uh, especially if you do it well, you know, it looks easy, <laughs> but hearing that there's that much thought that either went into it beforehand or, or as you figure out along the way, mm. I mean, we hear about, you know, actors coming up with, you know, the backstory themselves a lot of the time mm. for you. Was it obvious from the beginning with Red? Is that something you did figure out as you went along? I would say that it was probably a combination because it seemed to me pretty clear to me where Red was. It wasn't, I didn't feel, uh, uh, you know, I smoothed off the edges and, uh, you know, and found new things and this and that. But I think I had a pretty good idea of, where he was from from the very beginning and uh i i hadn't really done that before um based uh in that, and i of course i didn't tell any basic character but you know sort of based um somewhat uh on a person that i knew and i i didn't really know for sure where that was going to take me whether you know whether that was enough whether i had you know but i think on a good show, whether it's a sitcom or an hour long drama uh, or whatever, um, the way it should usually work is that, you know, the actor starts with what he's given and then he's trying as much as he can to do that. And he's also bringing stuff to the show. And it's uh, and then it's part of the job of the writers to see what it is that he's doing, he's bringing. So you add that, you know, so it really is a two way. Um, uh, you know, um, relationship. Yeah, yeah. Two. Thank you for yeah. <laughs> uh, you know a two way relationship between the writers and the actors uh, yeah. uh, on a good show. And um, I think most probably most actors will tell you that. How naturally then did comedy come for you? Well, you know, it seemed to come pretty pretty well. I. I was talking about this the other day with with my manager. You know, I came to film and television relatively late. Uh, you know, I was in my late thirties. I was almost forty years old when I came down to LA, and I had not just been sitting around uh, uh, up in the Bay Area. Uh, I uh, I'd been doing theater. You know, seven years. Of, Shakespeare Festival, you know, starting when I was in my, you know, mid twenties, and and then um, and then about the same, you know, seven or eight years in a regional theater. So I had had a lot of stage experience, uh, relative, and um, I think that that, um, you know, in in those kind of situations, you do everything. You know, you play big parts and small parts, and you play funny parts, you play farce. You know, you and serious tragedy and you know big shakespeare stuff and you know you so that for me the idea of comedy you know uh was was sort of natural not necessarily um on the part of uh uh of uh, you know the uh, most of the casting directors uh around town with the exception of mark hirschfeld Mark um, saw something in me. I don't know if he saw me in, in some little play around town or what it was, but he was convinced that I would work well in comedy. So he was always kind of like trying to get me in on these different pilots. And this was one of them. Um, I actually turned this down only because I, when the script came to me, I was in... Um, 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 Louisiana um, shooting on, on, on the Mississippi on a Sunday night and they wanted me to be there Monday uh, and I said this is this is crazy I, you know I'm not going to 
I'm not going to finish here in New Orleans and get on a plane and fly to LA and go into an audition. That's not, to, besides it kind of looks like it's a kid's show anyway, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, I, um, I, I passed and said, thank you very much. It did look like it did. It was a funny script and, you know, I thought it was a really good script, but it just wasn't going to work out. When I came back, then a few days later, my agent said, oh, you know, they haven't cast that part yet. You want to go in? And I said, yeah, sure. So I went in and then that night they said, great, I want to go to the network tomorrow. And then it was like, boom, boom. And then it was afterwards that I found out, fortunately, that Mark had said, ask them, please wait. I think, you know, I think you really like, you know, uh, Kirk. And, um, uh, and they did. And now, fortunately, he didn't, they didn't tell me that because then I would have been pretty nervous about you know, they've been waiting to see me. So anyway, that was kind of how I... But I had been in a few comedies, but I was usually kind of a straight, you know, heavy of some kind, you know, uh, uh, the mean boss or, you know, somebody who keeps the, uh, uh, the plot line going. Uh, right. They didn't give me too many laughs. Yeah. Um, it's great that he saw but, that in you. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it was really good. Yeah. yeah. Sure. And, and and I will say, I mean, there are there's plenty of moments, uh, even in this new season, especially in this new season. Um, I don't know how you keep a straight face. Uh, big butts and day drinking. That's one of the lines I wrote down. <laughs> but I'm telling you, you deserve some kind of award when you say that was Mayor Brown and his wife just died. That's <laughs> All right. One of the best right. lines, they, I think, in the entire series. They, they, they give me some great stuff. Uh, and uh, it's funny because sometimes on some of these lines, I don't remember saying them because, you know, you know how it's shot. You know, we we're shooting and we'll, we'll do a couple of takes and then the writers say, oh, hey, let's change this. Try this. Do this joke. So you might do a joke that you only said once you know, uh, a year ago. And so it's like, well, that doesn't sound familiar, but, you know, yeah. <laughs> but uh, big butts and day drinking, that's a good one. <laughs> it's good writing, good delivery, great delivery. Yes. Um, lots of great guest stars I wanted to bring up in this one. Um, oh, boy. Kevin Smith, Jason Muse, shooting the Carmen Electra scene. That must have been fun. That's, uh... That was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, she was very sweet. Yeah. Were you there when they uh, recreated the Lisa Loeb video for Stay? Yeah. I saw it, but I, I wasn't there when they shot it. They they, they pre-shoot things on Thursday, and if you're not in it, you don't need to come to work. You know, oh. not too many people come to work just for fun. You know, usually if you get a day off, you take it. You take especially it, especially since it's the day before the you know before you're shooting in front of the audience. Yeah, well, as someone who those moments, I mean, in that video, that I, I was the perfect age when that video came out. You oh, know? were you? So that was, yeah. That was a, you know, laugh out, actually laugh out loud moment. You know, it's like, I can't believe yeah. they're doing this and Lisa's there, <laughs> you know. Um, oh, she was very nice, too. Yeah. Uh, That's what, there are so many references that these kids pull off. Like, is that, are they just good at delivery or, or is someone having them do the homework? Like, this is a Mentos commercial. This is, this is what it looks like, you know, this is a music mm -hmm. video. I, if it's important, they'll usually show it to them or describe it in such detail that the kids get it. I also got to say, these are really sharp kids, every one of them. Uh, and they're also wonderful to work with. You know, big smile, hellos every day. And, you know, they we're not getting any uh, teenage mope sessions and, you know, that kind of thing that can happen. Uh, uh, it's 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 a treat to work with each one of them, and we try to do that. We try the writers try to have Red have a scene or a couple of scenes with the different kids as the scene goes along. I don't get too much stuff with uh, with uh, uh, a Mace who plays you know the Kelso kid. Um, I think. What I will probably we're probably saving that, but you know it's it's fun to put um, uh, uh, put me with uh, uh, with Ren. Uh, oh God, what's the name of his character? Uh, oh, I just Avi. Uh, 
you know, it's it, it's it's funny to see Ozzy with 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 such a sharp sharp mind and sharp mouth little kid, you know. Uh, and he's terrific. I can't believe. Yeah, he's like, I think he was fourteen last year. You know, it's just ridiculous. Um, I have grandkids, which has helped a lot because they're my grandson is sixteen, and so my granddaughter's been through. She's nineteen now in college, but uh, you know, she was just going through this a couple of years ago. So. You know, it's 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 rather easy for me. I I feel I feel comfortable working with them, yeah. and uh, and believe me, you know, we work with them. We we don't treat them like kids. You know, we treat them like you know people that we're working with, and uh, and and rightfully so. They are. You know, they 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 work very hard. They're prepared, and I just can't say enough about them. Yeah. It's been great fun. Yeah, the chemistry with each one of them that you have on screen, and how, as you were saying, how they pair you up. I, I could see so much of you and you and Ozzy that uh, that I love the way it works. That's uh, <laughs> and and on the adult side though, when Tommy Chong is around, what's it like seeing him slip into character? It's not a big slip. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, uh, you know, it's odd that. I have not seen Tommy. I didn't see Tommy this year. Um, he's so much got got it down in terms of what he's doing that he he they usually appreciate his stuff, and uh, which I think is a shame. Um, in fact, I'm going to mention that. And, uh, I think it's a shame because I think the audience would you know love to see Tommy working, uh, but he usually comes in on Thursday, does his scene, and then that's that's it. Uh, Tommy's, uh, yeah, he's a great guy. We were doing, I remember when, when we were doing a press, uh, you know, red carpet for the for the first show when we premiered. And I was standing next to him in some big group scene. And he had this, uh, this kind of leather necklace thing and some kind of a pouch, you know. And, uh, you know, Tommy and his reputation, and so I thought, well, Tommy's probably got something pretty interesting in there, you know, so I, I said, uh, hey, Tom, what's in the pouch there? And he said, it's my Tesla key, man. <laughs> Which I thought was great, but... <laughs> not what you thought. And no. Not what I thought, yeah, <laughs> not at all. Um, uh, he's uh, he's it's 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 wonderful having Tommy on the show. I just wish I personally saw more. Yeah, yeah we had we'll great see. people this year. So you know, really fun. Will Forte, mm -hmm. you know, Will kind of started out on our show, you know, uh, seventy show. He uh, he wasn't on the show, but he was a writer for the first uh, couple of years, and then he that. went directly. Yeah, he went directly from working with us to Saturday Night Live. Um, so it was just great having him there. He's such a he's such a friend. He's such a nice guy, and uh, and funny and fun to work with, you know. Um, and of course, the great Wayne Knight. Mm -hmm. um, I was privileged to have several scenes with him on one episode. And, oh God, so there are so many people, and we have such a great time yeah i could see that i, I could see that spinoff too you two happening you and wayne that's, uh, <laughs> right, exactly right <laughs> that's a fun one right there um and of course we get part three later this year so that's 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 good to hear yeah you've heard that i've i've seen it i've seen it because i mean oh, 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 oh part three part three, part three yes yeah, yeah i haven't yeah, seen it seen it but i've seen it written seen. that it's coming out in october yeah it's coming out in october you're right yeah we have eight at the end of this month 27th mm -hmm. and then and we have another aid in October 24th or something like that. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's a nice Which is good. I like that. You know, I, I'll, I'll tell you, I like it because otherwise I'm one of those people whose show drops. And so I'll watch all the shows in, in, in three, four days, you know. Right. Um, so, and then you got to wait a year. And so I, I, you know, I, I think Netflix is smart to do it this way, you know. Here, and then you'll get in in, in a few months, you get you get some more. You know. Throw that conversation out too, yeah. That was uh, right. really smart. Um, I was just uh, poking around at the other stuff you've been doing. Of course, there's the uh, anniversary viewings of the Dead Poet Society. That's probably always happening. 
That's a, yeah. I, I know that becomes part of the job. If you're lucky, that becomes part of a job for a lot of people to have that kind of, you know, legacy moment. Mm. What is it like for you to re-experience that time and time again? It's, it's odd. I didn't see it for a long time, uh, a few years ago. Uh, and in fact, I have to do this again tomorrow. Uh, but a few years ago, we did. I don't know what it was. Was it the 25th? Uh, I don't know. I get them confused as to which, which, uh, which birthday it is. Uh, but we, um, um, hello, um, the Australia Today show had asked me to come on and, you know, talk about the show. And so I said, happy to do it uh, because I love that show and I hadn't seen it in 20 years. So I sat down and watched it on television and I was just, you know, once again, so pleased and just wondered, you know, it just seems like it's one of those shows that you don't hear about it as much. You know, it doesn't seem to be on as many lists of, you know, the great films or the really good films or whatever. And uh, I, I just think that's, that's remiss. Um, so uh, I was, I was pleased to do it then. And, Totally on its own. Uh, a couple of months ago, they ran it in a theater uh, here in LA. Um, they, it's a theater that wants to basically show classic films. And uh, so they were showing um, Dead Poets Society, and I haven't seen it on the big screen since, you know, since it came out. So that was a real treat. You know, to, especially to see John Steele's cinematography uh, back on a big screen, you know, and those performances, you know, just seeing just Bob and, and Ethan, you know, they're just such babies, you know, uh, and doing such really, really good work, you know. I mean, I remember Ethan was such a character, such a card, you know, and that when you see him in the movie, he's just dead serious and uh and uh and bob is such a an actor beyond his years i think in terms of the way he he holds so much of that film together and it, and it, and it really uh it hurts me to see robin uh i knew robin from uh from the from the bay area we <laughs> had done a few plays uh, before either one of us came down to LA, and uh, you know he was uh, he was such a talent. I mean, you know, I, was, I did a play with him right when he was like I don't know, he must have been twenty years old or nineteen or something like that, right out of college of Moran, so twenty twenty one, whatever he was, and you know, I mean, he was brilliant then, you know, and then he went to Juilliard. So anyway, I had a long relationship with Robin and I just it just hurt so much when he, you know when he uh, when he went and um, uh, so seeing him again and being reminded about you know all the you know the softer side of Robin that was a great thing about Robin was that if you if you knew him and you know if you were with him if it was just you guys or if it was maybe three of us you know sitting around talking about this and that he was very much like he was in dead post you know nicely passed away. but you bring in that fifth person then it's and a show. all of a sudden he's it's showtime and he's wild and crazy yeah. anyway such a loss but so great to see him again yeah uh, i expect that that there's a chance that movie is going to end up on more lists considering the whole Taylor Swift thing that just happened. Cause I feel like oh. there's a whole new generation that just tuned into it. If I had to guess knowing yeah. how those Swifties work. So yes, it might be. Yes. Good point. I hadn't thought of that. That's a very good point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a good chance that a lot of people are uh, yeah. checking that one out these days. Speaking of music. And I wanted to ask about this. Um, we're very big fans of Dave Matthews in this house. Was, yes. of course, uh, get inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. You posted a picture yes. with Dave. Uh, what you guys did? You did a movie together, or what? We did an episode of House, um, oh, that it. television show. Uh, I he was uh, sort of a boss, is that what they're called? Uh, anyway, he was a 
he was kind of a, he, he, you know, he was a simple, he was, you know, he was what they used to call kind of simple kid, um, not a kid, but a young man, but that's the way he behaved as like a child. And, um, and I was his father and they, they came up with a, a new way of, of treating it, house did the, the character. And so for me, it was, it was heartbreaking because I would lose that child. You know, he would become a different sort of person. Um, it was, it was really interesting. And, uh, uh, I, and Dave was really good, you know, um, he did a really acting wise. I didn't, I mean, I knew he'd been in a couple of movies, but you know, I thought it was just kind of relatively simple stuff, but you know, he, yeah, I was very impressed with him. And, um, so we had a nice time doing that. And then uh, I would kind of, uh, oh, I'd see him. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, I remember down, I, I saw him down in the wall and saw him before the show for a while and then sat on the side of the stage and watched them do a set. And it was, um, it was great fun. He's a, he's a really sweet guy and, and uh, you know, really, really talented. Yeah. Person, no so, doubt he could have yeah. completely done the acting thing if he wanted to. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. I'm uh I, I'm I'm not sad that he chose not to. Uh like I said, <laughs> we love his music uh quite a lot yeah. around here. So uh the moment they were eligible, which has been a few years now, the moment they were eligible for the uh, the rock hall that first year, uh they got on the ballot and I was like, Oh, hopefully this happens. And then yeah. it didn't, and then it didn't the next year. Uh, and when it finally got that third year, I was like, Thank goodness, uh, because it's so yeah. easy to slip through those cracks. Yeah, yeah, and then all of a sudden uh, they're they're yeah, yeah, it's yeah, way yesterday. You know? Yeah, it's happy to see that. Um, bringing it back around this new season of that '90s show, uh, it is it's it's so good. Like I said, to find you all, see you all, find your footing. Uh, the writing is great, the acting is great. I'm looking forward to seeing part three as well. And Kurtwood, it is always a pleasure to talk to you. Yeah. Thank you so much for taking the time. Oh, um, believe me, it's my pleasure. It's really, I really enjoy talking to you, Carl. So good luck with everything. I'll take care of Louisville. Uh, next time I, uh, next time we go back to visit uh, friends uh, in Louisville, I'll try to find you. Yeah, look me up. I'm, I'm, I'm in the book. There's no book anymore, but I'm in the book. <laughs> <laughs> if there was a book, I'd be in it. I'd be in it. All right, it's okay. good talking to you. We'll see you around. Good talking to you, Carl. Take care. And thanks to my guest. Also, thanks to you. For, uh, for checking out the episode in the series. Before you get out of here, hit that subscribe button. Again, uh, you get three brand new interviews every single week. New one every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at uh, right here on YouTube or, of course, anywhere in podcast land, including iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podchaser, NPR, or WFPK.org as well. A great way to keep up with your favorite artists and discover new ones as well. Then after that, actually head over to WFPK.org. That's where I do a show, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern. It's an hour full of song premieres, music news, anniversary spins, bonus interviews, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern at WFPK.org. Consequence has your music and film news. You can also find me on the social media spots, uh, Facebook, Instagram, mostly on Twitter. All three of them, the address is at Kyle Meredith. Do hope you like and follow along. That does it for another edition. I'm Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time.